Do you invest in security at your organization based on fear or to get peace of mind? When it comes to automation, you can't afford to cut corners and not put essential security safeguards in place. The risk to your company reputation could be at stake. Atul and Ken will show you how to invest in a defense in depth strategy for cloud RPA that is not as hard as it might seem. Let's take a look. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the Spotlight session. I hope you have been enjoying the sessions with Imagine till date. My name is Atul. I'm the Product Marketing Lead for Security and Watchdog with Automation Anywhere. And today, I'm joined by our very own Ken Ross, who is the Senior Director of Product Management, overseeing all the features related to cloud and security. And today, we're going to be talking about defense in depth and the new rules of security for RPA in the cloud. Now, before we get started, there is one number that you may be interested in. In the last 15 years, there have been over 12,000 data breaches and cyber attacks on enterprises all over the world. And of that 12,000, over 1,000 has just been in 2020 alone. Now, given the current state of the scenario, it is kind of natural for all the SecOps and the IT teams of enterprises to kind of living in this dual reality of sorts. On one side, you're kind of worried that your organization may be the next victim of the data breach. But on the other hand, you also kind of have this sense of peace. Well, not maybe peace is not the right word, but uh, a sense of assurance that you have done everything in your power to make sure that your enterprise is safe from all these cyber attacks at that point in time. But as organizations are growing and the number of people joining your organization increases, so do the complexity and the sophistication of the processes that is adopted by the organization. Every department would have maybe 10x or 11x increase in the employees and the number of applications that they adopt to help with their day-to-day -day processes also increases by hundreds and thousands. Now to ease the complexity and the sophistication, organizations also adopt and look to adopt automation solutions. Now, given all the security concerns that the organization may have, they should not have to invest more resources and money into securing the automation platform as well. And that's where we come into today's topic, where we talk about defense in depth for every single enterprise all over the world. Now, defense in depth in itself is a very vast topic. So we have filtered it down into three layers. One, where we talk about the secure cloud and the platform basically how do you protect yourself from external breaches. The layer below that is the governance and compliance within your organization itself to protect the processes between departments. And at the very core, the data compliance or the data protection on how do you protect your data and how do you ensure your data is safe when you bring in automation into your ecosystem. Now, the simple answer to that would have been adopt Automation 360 the only cloud native AI powered most scalable platform automation platform available in the market today. And we have built Automation 360 from the ground up, keeping in mind that security is the most crucial piece for this. And that's why it is the best in class cloud security, governance and compliance. Now let's look at the outer layer of this defense in depth that we have in front of you. We start off with securing the cloud and the platform. Now, you may think that installing firewalls and installing the anti-malware software is good enough to keep your platform safe, but you also need to have a dedicated security personnel who is monitoring your ecosystem 24-7. They need to be aware of all the tiny things to look out for that indicates that a breach is happening or how to close the breach and keep the data secure. Now, let's say, God forbid, the breach does happen. What do you do? What is your plan for business continuity and resiliency? It need not even be a breach. Maybe it's a natural occurrence like an earthquake and your data center is affected. What do you do in that scenario? And finally, we have the privacy and GDPR compliance. Now, one of the good things about cloud is that you can set up your data center anywhere in the world. But one of the cons is that you do need to be compliant with your local government's ordinances and compliance requirements. And one of the most prominent ones is the GDPR, which pretty much is an all encompassing uh, set of compliance requirements that ensures that their citizens' data is kept private and secure. Now, to talk more about this, I would hand it over to Ken. Thanks, Atul. 
So just to provide a little bit more detail here, first of all, from the dedicated security infrastructure side, we have two teams. We have a cloud ops team whose main responsibility is to focus on doing the deployments and the updates globally. And then separately, there is a SecOps team providing oversight and also providing that defense in depth in terms of the way that we both set up the cloud, including the access, but also the way that uh, we actually do um, defense in monitoring at all the main layers. So we've got defense at a network layer and an application layer. And the way that we do the deployments is based on a containerized deployment under Kubernetes. This is part of the cloud native deployment piece. And it allows us to um, basically have a very resilient deployment. And this then ties into high availability and the business continuity side. So everything that we deployed on that infrastructure is highly available within a region. And we have um, strict policies around escalations around any incidents and uh, disaster recovery processes that in the event that a whole region would go down, we can kick those in. And we have um, solid processes around recovery of all the tenants in that region within a six hour time frame. And it's based on daily backups. So there's a the, the recovery point objective is within the last 24 hours. So that provides additional assurance over and above the high availability that we provide as part of the base deployments. And then lastly, a tool was mentioning the data privacy piece. So there's a big focus on the processes and the um, around GDPR, you know, the typical um, uh, personnel information handling that handling any asks around reports on individuals that uh, we can provide and also deletion if necessary. A little bit more background here on some of the certifications that we have. So this, these, the uh, SOC 2, Type 2 certification um, is in place and that basically assures customers that we're using the best practices. We have been doing this over the last year and this is often used for audit purposes to prove that what we're doing in terms of delivering the service is both best practices and secure. Uh, overlaid on top of that, we've got ISO 27001, which goes into more detail around information security um, a, uh, processes, procedures, and the controls that we put in place to make sure that the data is, is secure. The verified continuous certification is more focused on the development process, and we have a secure development lifecycle that that ties into. And then from a data privacy perspective, we conform to everything required from GDPR and some of the other regions in the rest of the world. Uh, thanks, Ken. Could you elaborate a little bit about the SOC 2 Type 2 certification and uh, what's the process involved? Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a certification that you get based on a third party audit. And it's basically going through all of our cloud ops and sec ops processes, procedures, controls, um, making sure that all of the updates and the way that we deploy are handled properly, that the security meets their best practice requirements, and also the data privacy piece. And yeah, it's a fairly onerous um, audit that we go through. It's something that we did um, in 2019 to kick off the type one certification. And then we repeated that last October to get the type two certification that shows that we've been doing this consistently over that period of time. So it's safe to say that we are the most secure automation platform available in the market right now. On the RPA side, yes, and we've bolstered that with ISO 27000 as well, as well. Perfect. Great. Now, once we have the auto platform and the cloud secure, let's bring it into the organization and the enterprise itself. How do you govern the access to your automation processes amongst your employees and departments? How do you ensure that maybe Bob from HR doesn't access Susie from finances process or the data over there? And this is where you need the federated architecture with RBAC, basically the role-based access control. Yeah, so let me provide a little bit more information here. So a lot of this stems down to um, access into the cloud and then the actual product architecture itself, the actual application. So in terms of accessing the actual service, we've put a lot of thought into the architecture around making sure that it's secure in terms of the protocols used. So web-based access over encrypted traffic with HTTPS, 
both from actual users using the system and also the infrastructure that's running the bots uh, uh, talking back into our control room application. So you'll see things here, and I'll just touch on a couple of them. Um, the, the ability to tie in to your identity pro provider for a single sign-on for users accessing the system. Also secure access from uh, with an integration into maybe your, your on-premise Git implementation for a to use it as a repository for the bots. And so there's a number of areas where you can, for example, limit the IP address ranges that can access your particular control room in our cloud, and it overall enhances that access from a security perspective. So we have two demos lined up for you. One which shows the credential vault that we have in place in our Automation 360 platform to keep all your credentials secure and any other sensitive data that you may need your bots to interact with. And then we will show you an RBAC feature that we have that ensures that the bots and the data that you want to be segregated amongst departments can be done so in a really simple manner. We'll start off with the credential vault now. So in this demo, we're going to show you a bot uh, accessing Salesforce Levering, leveraging credentials that are stored in our credential vault. Now, you'll see here this getting set up. Uh, this is often set up, um, the actual access to the credential vault is often governed by a separate user who's probably on the InfoSec team and allows the credentials for Salesforce to be set up within um, a, a locker within the credential vault that's within our application. So here you can see the locker is being set up, and often customers will set this up specifically for you know a locker per department, for example. And then you'll see here us setting up the access for a user, so that they can build their bot and have the credentials being taken automatically by the bot from the credential vault. So you're storing the credentials securely encrypted, and the bot can get access to an individual's credentials to be able to do the automation. That was fairly fast, but what it was showing was adding both the username and the password, and you can see the bot running here. And it's accessing, you should be able to log into Salesforce directly, there we go, with by leveraging those secure credentials. In this demo, we're just highlighting the, the separation of roles and the role-based access control that you can set up in the control room. And again, this could be for an InfoSec a team, for example, set teammates setting up the credential vault, or it could be the users within a finance department, and you give them a certain level of access to the bots within the finance department, and also the ability to build and run their bots but you don't necessarily give them the ability to then uh, run it in production, for example. In this case, we're giving them the scheduling capability. And you can just see that you've got fairly granular control over how an actual user is set up and what they can do in the system and what they, what they cannot do in the system. Thanks, Ken. And it's kind of good to know that uh, our back and credential wall together provides our users a granular level of control over the data and everything that's being processed through our automation system. Now coming to the very core of our defense in depth, how do you protect your data? All the data breaches and cyber attacks that have happened on all the enterprises till date, the perpetrators have been behind the data that the company has or the enterprise has. Now you may have all sorts of encryption in place, but you do have your bots working side by side with your knowledge workers touching upon the sensitive, crucial information. Of course, you do need to have a secure architecture in place. And to talk more about that, we have Ken now. Yeah, thanks, Atul. So this is the, the architecture diagram here. We're showing the customer infrastructure on the left-hand side and the aut our Automation 360 cloud deployment on the right-hand side. On the, on the deployment side here, we're hosting our main uh, RPA platform, Automation 360, with the various applications that are then handling, typically handling data, whether it's uh, providing the data in dashboards, uh, processing documents and extracting information from them. Obviously, the data is handled uh, in a transitory mode as part of the automation. It's not a not an application for storage, 
but the data is still there. So you need, we need to make sure that it's properly secured. First of all, in terms of access, a user coming in on a browser is using HTTPS from the browser. So it's encrypted in terms of logging into the control room and then using any of the applications. When an actual bot is run, it's deployed down onto the bot agent. But the way that the bot agent connects to the control room is it initiates the, the initial connection into our cloud. So from a InfoSec perspective on the cloud side, you're only opening up outbound HTTPS ports. So you're not expecting connectivity to come inbound. You're only uh, setting it up outbound, which helps on the security side. Now, when the bot is running, uh, it could be sending data images up into our cloud. So how do we secure that? First of all, the storage is all encrypted. So any of that data is encrypted in storage. Um, second of all, I'll just highlight one aspect of the whole events in depth thing, and that is on the container security. When we do a continuous deployment and we're deploying the containers, those are scanned from a security perspective to make sure that they're fine. And then secondly, we have a ongoing monitoring in place, a SIEM system basically doing baselining of the behavior of the applications. And that allows us to basically do um, anomaly detection. So if we see something odd happening, potentially, for example, there could be a bad actor running it that's taken over a container. We can kill the container that's running in the Kubernetes cluster. Um, it's in a clustered environment, so other processes take over and you don't see any interruption in service. And we've, and we've identified the potential security breach, which we can investigate uh, and make sure that we're not being attacked. Thanks, Ken. With that, let's summarize what we have covered so far especially when you're adopting an automation in the cloud. Three things that you do need to keep in mind. One, is the cloud platform secure? Does it have a dedicated security personnel? Is it compliant with all the policies that are in place set by the various governments? Two, within your organization itself, how do you segregate your processes and the data between departments or employees or different levels? And finally, three, how do you keep your data safe and secure from within? Thank you for joining us in the session. Do reach out to us for a free demo. Take care.